Welcome to Special Stage and welcome to a pretty windy Rockingham for round three of the Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship. We did tell you it was a winter rally championship, didn't we? Already we're seeing trends emerging, we're seeing battles emerging throughout the field and you have to say, with this weather dry and with this track, this has to be Darien territory today. Ashley Field already staking his claim on that championship leaderboard, but there are plenty more people here that can push him at Rockingham. Tons of cars. The variety through the field is what I've started to love about this championship. And by the end of this rally, we'll surely start to see who's sticking their head above in the fight for this new, exciting rally title. Just as predicted, the fast, dry stages were indeed Darien territory. Ashley Field and Ryan Vickers taking advantage of that fact, pushing right from the start. Ending stage three in the lead of the event and the class, in fact. I opened this show saying this is Darien territory and you're proving me right. It is, and this morning we decided to get on it from the first stage instead of waiting until the second, so... No, I psyched up for the first one, so it paid off. Their lead as well would be a reasonable 20 seconds over Reece Yates and Tom Woodburn. Out in the R5 for the first day of the rally and taking second place at this stage. Change of tyres this weekend, helping with the grip out on those stages. Talk to me about tyres. I understand you've changed your tact for this rally. Yeah, um, we're on Michelin's today, so we just thought we'd check, test some of them out. We had soft in first stage and then gone to medium now, so put the grip in well. Yeah. For David Tin and Giles Dykes, it will be third. In the hunt for victory once again, but they had plenty of competition. Five seconds will be the difference at this stage. Hardly anything in those podium places at this early point in the rally. I take it that wind isn't affecting you as much as it is me? No, you're not stood in the right place. You happy? Yeah, happy, yeah, we're not quick enough. Um, the old Darien, this is Darien territory today. We're going to be struggling with it. We need it to rain, but other than that, cool. We're enjoying it. Giles is back in the car for end of season. Bit of a bash, we're having a meal out tonight. Everything's cool. Peter Jackson and Stephen Hartley are back out again. The engine repaired and back in the car. The package performing well. New stages for the pair, fighting with the locals but going well with fourth place for now. You got a few problems there or everything okay, Jacko? No, uh, for a change, we're having a good run. Um, we took the engine out off the Alton, uh, put some new shells in it, and everything's going well, so. A little slower than James Sharrock and Stuart Folds would have wanted, but they had a good stage to end this loop and felt that the pace was getting better, ready for a push on the evening stages. They lined fifth place, third in class four. Are you happy? Uh, yeah, that's, that, that was our best day so far. Yeah, we've got the tyres right now and time to get our head down and let everyone get a little bit too far ahead. Um, yeah, see, let's see how we get on. Should be good. A year out of the car for Dave and Chris West meant they had a little slower start than they would have wanted to, but that didn't seem to be the case on the results. Sixth place for the pair now and clearly with plenty more to give. Well, it's a crowd pleaser, even when you're not going quickly, but you're quite quick out there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm not, I haven't driven the car for 13 months, and it's all new. It's got flappy paddles. Enjoying it? I'm well, struggling a bit, but I'm, I'm starting to enjoy it a bit, but now I can drive it. Nigel Mummery has a new co-driver this weekend. Chris Sharp Simkiss experiencing the awesome power of the Focus WRC off the start line. They lie in seventh place at this stage. Your co-driver was waxing lyrical about how quick this thing is off the line. How is it when you've got it going? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's fantastic off the line. Yeah, it wakes you up. What's it like when you're in the stage? Are you happy with the time? Yeah, yeah, everything's going well. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing what I expected to do. Yeah, so I'm happy at the moment. Yeah, I'll keep smiling. Good stuff. Cheers. OK. Andy Corner and Aide Campo, we're throwing the Persia around once again as we've become used to seeing them out on the stages. A bit more room to do that here compared to their last outing in Jersey. They lie in eighth place for now, second in their class. Andy, the last time we met was in the Jersey lanes. This is a bit different, but you're going just as quick. It is very different. We, we were hoping to see some rain. It's so, so different here, but you've just got to keep it neat and tidy and just keep the speed going. I'm not sure you're going to get rain, but the weather's not exactly uh, favourable when you stood outside. Yeah, I think we can tell when the wind's behind us because we definitely seem to be going a bit faster. But no, it's been good. It's running really well, very smooth. That's 80s aerodynamics for you. Yes, that's right. Brilliant. And it's a reasonable run for Daryl Morris and Steve Gully as they get to the end of these stages with ninth place overall, third in the class. Happy enough with the pace as well at this stage. 
Rounding out our top 10 for now were Stuart Gilks and Mike Boynes. Happy with the pace and enjoying the stages, lying fourth in class three for now. Happy? Very happy, that's, that's a really good third stage. So uh, after, after, it just seems like a couple of weeks ago we were uh, at Cadwell, so great to be here at Rockingham. It was a good start for Darren and Sue Underwood on the back of their class victory last time out at Cadwell Park. They lie in the lead of class two at this stage, just outside the top 10 in 11. Steve Beck and Paul Barham round out the top of class three now. Fifth place in the class and 12th on the leaderboard. A change to a harder tyre was helping. The tyres going off too quickly in the previous stages. Things were going okay as well for Mike Bayliss and Peter Dawson. Happy with the pace and happy to be doing some stages in the dry. They lie in 13th place overall, fourth in class. That would be a place though they'd have to share, with a few crews in fact. The first of those being Steve Cressy and Tom Murphy. 13th place overall and fourth place in class five. And that position would also be shared with Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham. Out in a new car and so far having more luck in the tarmac races than they often had on gravel. They lie fifth in class five at this stage. Tire choice was the talk of everyone here once again. And Martin Stockdale and Mark Swallow still hadn't decided on the right ones. 18th place for now, fifth place in class four. Richard and Stuart Bliss, meanwhile, were having a good run, but suffering a little with understeer. They lie in 19th place on the leaderboard, second in class two. Christopher and Anthony Newton make a good start. They felt they were struggling with a lack of power, but that wasn't stopping them pushing. And they lead the class by 20 seconds. For Joe Cunningham and Mark Fowler, it will be second in that class. A few places back overall and pushing on to try and catch the class leaders. We'd see a small incident for Justin Lawson and Paul Hargreaves in the first stages as they hit a tyre wall. But thankfully, not much damage other than cosmetic to that Nova. They carry on to lie third in class one, a further 16 seconds behind Cunningham. They share that overall place with Don Booth and Carl Swales, but they were in a battle of their own in the class and in the Army versus RAF battle going on this weekend. And we'll catch up with these guys later in the show for more details on that battle. Three seconds behind Booth in class two would be the Puma of Tim Gray and Mark Casey. Fourth in the class and 40th on the leaderboard struggling with the tyres, not getting the heat into them on the first lap of each stage. Dave Roberts and Dave Owen, meanwhile, start getting faster as the day goes on. The longer stage allowing for a bit more of a rhythm. They lie fourth in the class at this stage. William Hill and Jamie Vaughan would lose a little time with an incident on the opening stage of the rally. But after that, things went a little more to plan. They lie fifth in class two for now. And a few months since he was last out, it will be fifth place in class one for Will Barnard with Simon Higgs alongside, enjoying the stages and getting used to being back behind that wheel. In class zero, it will be Stuart Andrews and Gary Whittington who lead the way out of just two crews in the class this weekend. With David and Robert Ginn ending the morning stages with second in that class, although the times were in fact identical. So at the midway point of day one, a close fight throughout the leaderboard. The results at the top, though, look like this. Now, as you can see, this is all about racetracks, this Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship. So we thought, who better to speak to about the change from racing to rallying than someone who's done a bit of both? No. Paul, what does it take to adjust? You're using a car that you use for racing. What does it take to adjust to the circuits, both the car and for yourself? Okay, we've done quite a bit to the car in, in a bid to try and get competitive. Obviously, it's a bit of an underdog. Mm. So we've put some performance bits on. We've increased the power by 30, 40%. We've got a flat shift sequential gearbox in there. So we're trying to get closer, but we're not doing too well today. Um, well, it's because my first time in a rally format at Rockingham. I know the Oval, I've yeah. done the Asgard stuff here. Uh, we've done ordinary circuit stuff, but um, I'm a little bit out of bed with it at the moment. So we've tried to get on it the last two stages, and obviously I've had yet another mishap on the passenger side again. So we're not doing so great, but hopefully if we can stay maintained and get a bit more used to it, we'll try and get into the top three in class tomorrow anyway. That's the main thing, is the, the class competition for the championship. And I suppose 
was the biggest thing, apart from changing from the discipline of surfaces for some rally guys to the circuit? For you, it's you going the wrong way around in some cases, so it all looks different. Um, yeah, I think, you see, I think you've got your bearings with the circuit, and I think it is advantageous to have done some of the circuits, but I, I, I thought I'd be more familiar here than other places. I think Anglesey will suit me, I think Croft will suit me. Obviously, Alton was great. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think by the end of tomorrow, I'm having a better conversation with you, and we're a bit nearer the mark. We're certainly yeah. trying hard enough, it's just not quite working out for us at the you moment. You are trying hard enough, and it's shown by the damage you've been doing to the car, because <laughs> you put new corners on it, and you've taken them back off again. Yeah, it's exactly the same corners, so I'll, I'll be in for a lot of stick when I get back home and back to work because they don't see what goes on they'll just take the mickey but yeah, now yeah. I'm absolutely loving the concept of the championship and the circuit thing and the fact it's done in a period where you know there isn't that much motorsport going on so all credit to all of you that have organised and the TV it's great fantastic that from a racing man as well as the rally men that we've spoken to and the ladies of course today here at the Rockingham stages it's getting dark it's getting cold and more windy and it's time to go out and do some more stages yeah in the dark yeah that's going to be an eye opener so yeah it's, um, we hope the lights are good enough to find them little tricky bits in the chicanes I missed them in the light so the dark could be very interesting. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Jade, Sarah, here we are at round three, and you guys have been doing pretty well in your class. Yes, we're doing well. Um, we haven't checked the results too much. We've been quite busy. Um, we've had to do quite a lot of work on the brake today. Uh, we've changed the brake pads. It seems to have thrown some things off. So we're just working on that. Hopefully it all comes together. Yeah, the team are all doing it now. Sarah, you're having to raid Jane in a bit. Jade in a bit because she's coming from racing, of course, back yeah. into the rally. And you've got the rally background, though. Yes, I have. Uh, done a NWCC this year. Hoping to do a bit more on gravel and a bit more on pace notes next year. Just to get the experience up a bit. So we'll see where we go from there. And talking of experience, you do a winter rally championship and you get this. You get, you get wind and rain. And and howling storms. No, it's good because with Sarah's experience, because she's sat with quite a few drivers, and I'm still kind of learning to listen yeah. from sitting by myself in a race car to hop in with Sarah has been really good because she really does shout at me if I don't listen, and um, she does kind of give me honest feedback. So if I need to break later, she will say, you know, we got on really well in the car. We do have good fun. <laughs> so are you having to sort of push her on a bit as well as sort of back her off? Uh, yeah, it's pushing her, uh, pushing her on, and stopping her braking so early. Really, um, it's just getting her confidence up in the car and in the brakes that she can push. Quite a quick car to jump in on in the rally thing, isn't it? Yeah, very quick car, has so much potential, and Jay's got so much potential as well, so it's just maximising that, really. OK, well, we'll carry on catching up with you guys through the season. Sorry to get you out with your, your hair blowing everywhere. It's bad enough for me, and mine's quite short. Yeah, and fingers crossed it all comes together. The boys are working really hard, yeah. so we've had it up at um, Group of Motorsport um, and yeah. D-Side, and they've done a really good job, so it's just making sure it all comes together on event. Cheers, guys. Thank you Thank very you. much. Halfway through day one and perhaps those predictions were right after all. It is Darien territory here. Ashley Field really running away with it in the first part of this rally. Long way to go and with the longer stages as well, those tyres are becoming a talking point as they have been at the previous two rounds. But then again, we are on racetracks for this championship, so we could have predicted that as well. More action on the stages as the Rockingham rally continues. On to the next few stages and we start to descend into darkness. And for Ashley Field and Ryan Vickers, it would all go horribly wrong. They split off the stage too early and end up with a stage maximum, ending any chance of victory or indeed a good result for the championship this weekend. That's not the way you wanted this day to end. No, no, it's not. So, it's one of those things. Goes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes. So. Concentration. I was just following instructions. <laughs> Bit of extra testing for you. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> This, of course, meaning that the fight for the lead that was going on between Field and Reese Yates with Tom Woodburn would now become easier. The Fiesta pair get to the end of the day with the lead, but unfortunately they were not out competing in the championship, only doing the single day rally here at Rockingham. End of day one, you come out fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a good day. I had a little mistake on that uh, fifth stage, but yeah, it's great day, really enjoyed it. You just have a constant smile on your face in this thing, so it's all good fun. So for David Tin and Giles Dykes, it will be second place for now. The fight was becoming somewhat easier, not how they like it in fact, but that wasn't going to slow them down. They still needed to be on it for day two. Oh, last, yes, all been good, yeah, we've had a good day. No, no issues, played about with tyres today. Played about the suspension, set it, got the car a lot stiffer than what we've had it during the season from the REIS Championship. And yeah, it's all cool. Yeah. Cheers. See ya. There's movement in the right direction for James Sharrock and Stuart Folds, meanwhile. They now lead the way in Class 4 and lie third overall. Happy with the pace now, and even happier to have finished day one at Rockingham for the very first time. 
Happy with that, James? Uh, yeah. Uh, just saying, it's the first time we've finished the first day at uh, Rockingham, so yeah, it's, it, we can take that as a positive. Um, yeah, we just had a difficult day, but it seems to be seems we've got ourselves sorted. But uh, tomorrow, I think it's going to rain, so all sometimes again. the fights against your own demons. Yeah, thanks. Dave and Chris West were happy with the pace now too. Happy that the car wouldn't go any faster, at least. They lie in fourth place, leading the way still in Class 3. So you feel well and truly inducted back in? Yeah, we're back in. We're on the pace, I think, there. We're, yeah. yeah, flying through. <laughs> Don't think we go any quicker through those chicanes. <laughs> we're, like, wiggling it through them. But, yeah, no, loving it now. Really enjoying it. Good stuff. Getting Cheers. used to the car again now. And Peter Jackson and Stephen Hartley have a small collision with the back of the car in these stages. But they didn't do too much damage, ending the day with fifth place, second in class four. Now you have been working hard. I'm working hard. I'm trying to keep up with these boys, these local boys. So we're driving it hard. If you have a quick peep at that rear quarter though, my yeah. lads are going to kill me. But uh, it's good. No problems at all to report for Andy Corner and Aid Campo. They enjoy the stages in the dark and end the day with sixth place overall, second in the class behind West up ahead. Well, from the right. outside at least, it looks like you're pedalling this thing about as far as it can go. Oh, we're having a whale of a time. It's dark now. It's yeah, great. It's okay. No, it's good. Really good. Yeah. Very End pleased. of day one, happy with everything? Yeah, the car hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to rain tomorrow, so we're good. It's there will be a couple of crews sharing seventh place overall. Darren and Sue Underwood, the first of those, leading the way in class two and well inside our top ten on the leaderboard. Here you are, end of day one. The motivation was clearly to have an interview with us guys. Well, what can you say, really? It's like a big carrot. Top crew, got to do it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> All good? Yeah, no, that was good. We can live with an R5 down the straight. That'll do me. <laughs> and sharing the position with the Underwoods were Daryl Morris and Steve Gully. Third place in class three for the pair and seventh overall. Happy with how everything was going so far. At the end of day one, are you a party boy as it says on the window? Oh yeah, I'll be in the bar later. <laughs> for sure. Happy though? Yeah, no, we're going really well. We enjoyed the night stages. It's been a really good event so far. Nigel Mummery and Chris Sharp Simkis slip a little down to ninth place now. But Nigel didn't like the dark stages. Day two would hopefully be back up to full speed for the focus pair, climbing up the results once again. That remained to be seen, though. End of day one, you've got it all again to do tomorrow. Oh, no, yeah, but at least it's daylight tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. I prefer the daylight to the dark. Yeah. I haven't eaten enough currants. So how did damage limitation go, then? Yeah, they were fine there, yeah, I think, at the moment. Yeah. I won't have to put anything rude on the uh, slip at the end. <laughs> And rounding out the top 10 were Stuart Gilks and Mike Boynes, fourth in class three and happy to keep up the same pace for tomorrow's stages. Day one good? Yeah, very good day one, happy with that and uh, we'll just keep pushing gently tomorrow. Just outside the top 10, it will be 11th place for Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham. The pair ending the day with fourth place in class five, although the centre diff on the car wasn't working and would need some attention before the start of the second day of competition. Gardner would share that place with Steve Quigley and Tom Hutchings, now moving up to fifth place in Class 3 and picking the pace up as they go along. A new venue for the pair, so it was all about learning where they could push. Richard and Stuart Bliss have a small incident with a tyre wall, but they do get away with it with minimal damage continuing to lie second in Class 2, now up to 13th overall. Mixed views on the dark stages for Mike Bayliss and Peter Dawson, but they do enjoy them when it goes well. 15th overall for now, lying third in class four. And just five seconds back from Bayliss at the end of the first day of the rally, were Martin Stockdale and Mark Swallow, fourth in the class and ending the day with 17th on the leaderboard. It's a move to fifth in class four now for Mike Taylor and Martin Haggett, getting faster as the stages went on, but finding it hard to pick out the breaking points in the dark here at Rockingham. They lie in 18th on the leaderboard. We'd see no change to the class one lead for Christopher and Anthony Newton. A good lead in the class to take into day two and one of a handful of crews looking for rain tomorrow on those stages. Craig Teasdale and Duncan Lilwall were going well in the RAF versus Army battle. Glad that the night stages were over, but moving up to fifth place in class five and 21st on the overall leaderboard now. 
And for the army guys, Don Booth and Carl Swales in the Peugeot, it will be 22nd place overall, third place in their class going into day two, but getting held up with cars on the stage. No change for Joe Cunningham and Mark Fowler. Unable to make any advance on the class one lead, they do continue to lie second in the class at this stage, 45 seconds back now. No more mistakes for William Hill and Jamie Vaughan. Fourth place in class two for the bear and 38th on the leaderboard at the end of the first day. And nothing at all to report for Tim Gray and Mark Casey. They end the day with fifth place in class two. More than happy with the performance of the car and happy to continue as they are going into day two. For Will Barnard and Simon Higgs, it will be third place in class one to end the day. A few handling issues throughout the day, not helping the times, but things were going well so far. And it will be fourth place in that class for Justin Lawson and Paul Hargreaves. Out on only their second event in the championship and in the dark. So the pace was looking good, even if they had a few issues with fuel surge on the car today. And for Kev and Sarah Hutchinson, it will be fifth place in the class. A little way off those head down in 54th place on the leaderboard, but still in the fight. No change in the class zero battle as Stuart Andrews and Gary Whittington continue to lead the way there. Now with a comfortable margin as well. And still that margin over David and Robert Ginn. Second in the class, 64th place overall. A special mention has to go to Vince Sillett and Sam Keeley, lying 26th overall at the end of day one and entertaining everyone as they promised me with their Christmas decorated car and Christmas songs on the in-car CD player. It's all Christmas in here, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's actually Christmas all the time in here. Definitely, all the time. It's always Christmas. Happy with everything apart from the jingles? No, no, it's very good. It's a very good day. Yeah. Got it all to do again tomorrow. I hope you got enough jingles in there. We got we got another two CDs yet, so we haven't started yet, so all good. It's done. Well, the end of the first day here at Rockingham, round three of the Motorsport New Circuit Rally Championship, and we've got some shake-ups in the leaderboard. Here's how it's looking after day one. So at the end of the first day of the rally here at Rockingham, the results at the top are all changed, and indeed are set to change once again as we start day two. On to day two then of the Rockingham Stages Rally, round three of the Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship. It's a change of leaderboard as well. Reshapes was only doing the one day, the Saturday of this rally. And of course, we've got no Ashley Field at the front either. And the rain that many were talking about and hoping for hasn't arrived. So it is still ideal conditions on the racetrack. Let's see how those stages unfold. On to day two here at Rockingham then and the loss of Field and Yates from the event means that David Tin and Giles Dykes take the lead for the first time this weekend. Not in circumstances they would have chosen, it has to be said, but with a lack of pressure can come a lack of concentration, so they would still have to keep on that pace. With a comfortable lead, do you back off, do you push? Well, it's about finding a happy pace where we don't crash, lose concentration or fall off the road, so no, we're just taking a time. We're pushing a little bit, but I mean, that's just to enjoy the day. Pleased to see you've got out the cafe. Peter Jackson and Stephen Hartley have a good run on this morning stages to take up second place now. There was a minute and a half to go to catch up to that lead. So that was looking unlikely, but second place was a great spot to be in. What is your fight this afternoon? What can you do? Um, well, we're giving it maximum attack and um, we put some harder tyres on the back to get some better grip. Um, and if the weather keeps off, I think we're, uh, we're in for a shout. So this means that James Sharrick and Stuart Folds will be in third place overall, just two seconds behind Jackson. The class battle for that runner-up spot would have to continue into the final stages of the rally. You're sitting pretty there, but can you do anything about that proton? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, we'll see. Um, we're certainly pushing as hard as we can. It uh, feels good out there. So stages, uh, stages are a little shorter now, so we've had a problem with the tyres going off. So who knows? Let's, uh, let's bring it to David see what we can do. It's disappointment for Dave and Chris West as they have a misfire on the start of the stage, losing valuable time. They would have been pushing for a podium place without those issues. But for now, it would be down to fourth. 
You're really into the swing of this now, aren't you? Yeah, we had a misfire at the start of that and we had a stop on the stage, so we've lost about 30 seconds, so a bit pissed off. Ruined your day? Ruined the day. We were challenging for second overall, but we've lost that now, so... Daryl Morris and Steve Gully, meanwhile, had a few little issues of their own to contend with this morning, but they were sorted now. Fifth place for the pair at this stage, just six seconds behind West in the class and overall. How are things? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, good. Happy out there? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. A few uh, little issues before, but we got it done in service, so it's all good. That's what it's about. A change to a harder compound of tyre was helping Andy Corner and Abe Campo. The grip on the front of the car around the racetrack stage is a lot better with the new setup, and they end the morning with sixth place. Watching you on the infield sections, you're not even chucking it in, you're kind of drop kicking the car into the corners, you're really pushing. Yeah, no, it's good, we've, we've changed tyres, we've finally now gone to hards, so the front is, is working really yeah. well. We're just going to let the back follow us round, really. Yeah, it does. Uh, no, it's really good, really good. Thank you. No compound of tyres. We're going to save Darren and Sue Underwood, though, from trouble on the opening stage of the day. With way too much speed into this corner, they put the car off and into the Armco. Luckily, the Armco doing its job and stopping the car going down into the ditch below. Sadly, and with equal drama, that is something that couldn't be said for Philip Rowland and Philip Woodcock. They go off in the same place as Underwood, but with just the makeshift tyre wall to stop them, it's a trip into the ditch for the BMW pairing. Back to the results, it will be seventh place for Nigel Mummery and Chris Sharp Simkis. Second of the class five runners now, and pushing hard enough to be thinking about buying some new tyres. Hanging in there, Nigel. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I don't know where the tyres are going to last, though. Yeah, well, you've <laughs> I might have to get some through. motorway remoulds or something on it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. No, Jeez. I doubt it. The run of good fortune continues for Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham as they end this loop with third in class five. The diff now fixed, but there were still some setup issues to sort on that new Subaru. Well, you're still here. I'm still here, yeah. Can you believe it, yeah? Maybe tarmac's the way to go. We've got a few little setup issues, yeah. We saw it the centre diff, but we keep on just shredding tyres. It's more like Ken Block out there for us at the moment, so I think you're not allowed to do donuts, but maybe, maybe we'll sneak one in. <laughs> well, if it just means you're getting yourself out of a bit of trouble, I'm sure no one would complain. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Nice and reliable, get to the finish now, so thank you. Yeah. Steve Quigley and Tom Hutchings in the clear were building on the pace now as they move inside the top 10 and reach the end of stage nine with ninth place overall. Fourth place in class three in a car that really should be suited to these stages. The rain dance didn't work, Steve. No, we're talking about rain again. It didn't. Um, the first stage was a bit, uh, a bit slow. We had some fuel surge, but we've filled the tank up now. No problems. Last two were flying really, really happy. I think we're Nudging in the top 10 now, so really, really good. Want to say thanks to EbTech that got us here today and uh, sat down a few other people, but it's been a torturous task the last couple of weeks, but it's been brilliant. Really enjoying it. I'm astounded. Tom Hutchings that you filled the tank up. <laughs> well, it's got to, we've got to balance the sides out. One's a bit heavier than the other side. <laughs> and rounding out the top 10 with Steve Beck and Paul Barham. A steady start to the day, but the pair were going well now and putting in some good times just two seconds behind Quigley. Happy? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've woken up a little bit this morning and... Uh... Well, that's the alarm clock going off now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's been good. Yeah, great, great morning so far. Yeah, did. Yeah, hopefully we can keep it up. <laughs> For Richard and Stuart Bliss, it would be the lead in Class 2 now after the loss of the Underwoods. They reached this point in 11th on the leaderboard, pushing for a top 10 finish. Mike Bayliss and Peter Dawson were still happy with things on the stages. The car performing and handling well. They end this loop with 12th overall, third in class four. A harder tyre choice for Martin Stockdale and Mark Swallow was working well. Once they got the heat into them, that was. So the first lap of each stage was a little scary. They lie fourth place in class for now. For Craig Teasdale and Duncan Lilwall, it would be fourth in class five at this stage and 15th overall but they were having some problems coming into service with smoke coming out of that car. For Mike Taylor and Martin Haggett, it was 16th at this stage. A problem with the dash indicator meant that they couldn't tell what gear they were in, but that was just making things interesting. Fifth place in class four now. And we see a change to fifth place in class five as David Gathercole and Andy Rowe take up that position. Happy enough with how they were going now in 18th on the leaderboard. 
It's a move to second in class now for Don Booth and Carl Swales, although Don was getting a little workout on the stages now thanks to the power steering braking during this loop. And it's a bit of good fortune after their bad luck at Cadwell for Joe Cunningham and Mark Fowler. They take the lead of the class now after the loss of the previous class leaders in much the same way they lost it at the previous round. William Hill and Jamie Vaughan go into day two with a bit more confidence and the pace increasing to boot. They end this loop with third place in class two, 30th overall. Still no problems for Tim Gray and Mark Casey. Fourth place in that class and happy with everything so far. Hoping the rain would stay away now as the slicks were working perfectly. There wouldn't be much Justin Lawson and Paul Hargreaves could do to get any closer to the top of the class this weekend. Second was theirs if they could keep things going to the finish. And things were still going well for Will Barnard and Simon Higgs. A brush with a tyre wall this morning wasn't helping things, but there were no serious problems, no time loss either. They remained third in Class 1, 35th overall. Phil Bruce and Tom Roberts appear in the top of the results on day two, fifth place in Class 2 at this stage, and happy with how things were going out there on the stages. Kev and Sarah Hutchinson move up a place in Class 1 after the loss of the leaders, of course. They take up fourth place in the class, 49th on the leaderboard. And just one position behind on the leaderboard were Adrian Mayle and Rob Hayden. 17 seconds would be the difference, and with a few stages left here at Rockingham, anything was possible. No change though in the class zero battle, Stuart Andrews and Gary Whittington leading the way in that class. And it would still be second for David and Robert Ginn as well, 58th place overall to end this loop. So with just three stages remaining here at Rockingham, the results at the top look like this. One of the more interesting features here this weekend at Rockingham is the Conningham Cup, which is the Air Force boys versus the RAF boys. And at the moment it is RAF 4-2, isn't it? Yes, Paul, yeah, we're, we're beating the Army 4-2. Um, as you can see in the background, the, uh, the RAF are uh, struggling at the moment with an engine mounting on the Subaru, but we should be all right. We're this is Phil Bruce. He's been competing with the Royal Air Force stickers on his car for a lot of years now, even when I used to compete against you. And it's great to see that you're bringing more of the guys out and you're getting this friendly rivalry going on between the forces. Yeah, this is. Uh, we've got five RAF crews here this weekend and, and five uh, Army crews, so it's, it's really good to see us getting, uh, getting more competitors out there. Yeah. And this is something you're going to be running as an inaugural event this time? Yep, yeah, it's going to be an annual event here at Rockingham. Uh, this is the first year we've managed to run it, and hopefully we get the, uh, the Navy on board when we find some, uh, some cars that they've got. And of course the forces have been supportive um, of this sport, haven't they, over the years? We've had Mar and we've had quite a few uh, military uh, defence base, ministry defence bases used. Oh yeah, massively, yeah. Obviously we've got the real estate in the, in the Air Force having lots of airfields, but yeah, it really does make a difference when we can uh, put it back into the, uh, to the service. Good luck, let's hope these guys can get that car sorted and you can keep the Air Force on us up. Yeah, thanks Paul, that's pretty soon. Time for the Army. Okay, we spoke to Phil Bruce from the RAF. Here's Dom from the Army. You guys could have the advantage if Teasdale doesn't get back out, but what's this rain going to do? Yeah, well, it's one of them. Do we put the wets on and overeat them? Do we sit with the Hoosiers and risk going off? Um, I think we'll go for the wets. Chase down Craig. A um, couple of seconds of stage so far we've been doing him, so hopefully we'll take on us and... Uh, take the posh boys down <laughs> <laughs> the posh boys because you guys have got a sort of friendly rivalry which is, is historic isn't it but here you are bringing it onto the rally stages definitely there's uh, a lot of pride at stake I'm afraid so uh, the pressure's on especially in the little 1600 against the big Scoobies yeah. some giant killing to be done I think and I don't know if you can see behind me but you've got all the army lads gearing up ready getting those wets ready because Dom has warned them he wants some wets he means business this afternoon good luck for the last three cheers thanks a lot Well, we've been talking about rain all weekend. Some crews wanted it, some crews didn't. It's fair to say that James Sherrick chasing David Tin down in front in that Proton probably didn't need the rain. This can only add to that advantage if they can keep it on the black stuff because it will change things. Race tracks are notoriously slippery once the rain comes and it's been dry all weekend. Three more stages left. Let's see what action unfolds here at Rockingham. On to the final stages then, and no change for David and Robert Ginn as they end the rally with second place in Class Zero. For Stuart Andrews and Gary Whittington, it will be the lead of that class, 48th overall. 
And there's no change in Class 1 as Adrian Mayle and Robert Hayden continue to hold 5th place in the class to the finish. For Kev and Sarah Hutchinson it will be 4th in the class, just over a minute ahead of Mayle at the finish. Will Barnard and Simon Higgs continue their steady pace to take 3rd in Class 1 at the end of the rally in that Nova. For Tim Gray and Mark Casey there will be no change. Fifth place in class two and happy that the rain stayed away for most of the rally at least. For Phil Bruce and Tom Roberts, it would be fourth place in class two to end the event, as well as 31st place overall. As predicted, no change to the class for Justin Lawson and Paul Hargreaves. Second in class one to the finish and 30th overall. A good result considering the small problems this weekend. William Hill and Jamie Vaughan continue to gain the confidence in the car to take 25th place overall and 3rd in Class 2. No bad luck this time out for Joe Cunningham and Mark Fowler. They reached the end of the rally with the Class 1 lead, taking the Class victory they missed out on at Cadwell. Don Booth and Carl Swales do their bit for the Army versus RAF battle and their 20th overall and second in the class actually goes towards netting the victory in that battle for the Army this weekend. Well, in the Conningham Cup, I'm sure you were dying to know, it's the Army on top. Dom, Carl, what a result for you guys. Really happy, um, especially with the calibre of cars and experience yeah. that a lot of the RAF have done. Um, we've tried hard today, as you can tell from the car. Um, but yeah, we've brought it home for the boys, I think. What a great idea. We were talking to Phil Bruce earlier, and, and you guys, Carl, uh, obviously, nice friendly rivalry between the two forces, but it's good for PR, isn't it? It's good to get you out of here fighting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is really good. I mean, this is my first year doing navigating as well, um, and just to see everyone and all the friendship between everyone, it is, it is really good. So it's quite a journey over for you as well, isn't it? Oh, definitely. It's uh, Germany, so that's, it's a good two-day two journey, so it's good. I know, talking to you earlier, Dom, you've got a few of the projects lined up, a few things in mind as well to perhaps raise the profile of the Army rallying exploits even further. Yeah, definitely. We're trying to um, push to get core teams together, um, so each regiment will have their own team, um, get a competition within the Army and uh, just build it from where we are. I've got five cars so far this year. Um, build that next year and uh, see us out on big events. Good luck for now. It's you boys flying the flag. Well done. Uh, so, so. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. David Ashburn and Johnny Evans had a few problems this weekend, mainly seeing in the dark and negotiating chicanes, but they reached the end of the rally with 19th place on the leaderboard and 5th in Class 5. Martin Stockdale and Mark Swallow lose a little time on the final stages of the day, dropping to 15th place overall and 5th place in Class 4 in that BMW. And it will be fifth place in class three for Steve Beck and Paul Barham. The pair putting in some good times through the afternoon stages. Mike Taylor and Martin Haggett meanwhile have a good run to end the rally with 13th position. The dash problems may be knocking the confidence a little, but it wasn't showing. They finish with fourth place in class four. Richard and Stuart Bliss unfortunately don't manage that top 10 they were hunting, but they do manage 12th place on the leaderboard and the victory in Class 2. It wasn't the best of weekends for Steve Quigley and Tom Hutchings. Much better than Cadwell though, they end the rally with 11th place overall and 4th in Class 3. On to our top 10 and it will be 10th place for David Gathercole and Andy Rowe. That result getting them fourth place in class five too. Just ahead of them in the class were Harry Gardner and Elliot Graham finishing an event. Can you believe it? And with a top 10 result. Maybe this kind of championship was the way forward for the pair who never seemed to have much luck on the gravel in four wheel drive. For Daryl Morris and Steve Gully, it would be eighth, ending the day with the final step on the podium in class three. And there was nothing more that Andy Corner and Aide Campo could do. They end the rally with seventh place overall, taking second in the class with this finish.
For Nigel Mummery and Chris Sharp Simkis, it was sixth place overall. The focus pair moving back up the results throughout the day, having lost some time in the dark. It's a good end to the day, despite the issues for Dave and Chris West. It wasn't the podium they could have been looking at, but fifth place was still a solid finish for their first time back out in over a year. Paul King and Alicia Miles make an appearance into the top of the results in these final stages. They end the rally with fourth place, just less than two minutes off the lead. Sadly for Peter Jackson and Stephen Hartley, the second place they'd held before had frustratingly changed to third, but the result was still a good one. A podium position on their first visit to the event and after disappointment at round one of the championship. For James Sharrock and Stuart Folds, it would be second. They were unlikely to catch the leaders without any problems, but that result would set them up nicely in the championship points going into round four at Croft. But that means it's win number two for David Tin and win number one for Giles Dykes in the co-driver's seat. They reached the end of the rally with a good minute and a half lead, taking victory and ending a great year for the pair. So before we chat to the winners, here's a reminder of the final overall results. David Giles, winners of round three. David, it's, it's been a fight, but the fight was made a little easier yesterday. Yeah, we've had, we've had it easy today, to be honest with you. We've, we've been able to back off most of the while. Unfortunately, Ashley had a, a bad lung yesterday. The lad with the Fiesta pulled out as well. So um, we've run it to the end. Nice end of season for us. Nice to do the double here at Rockingham, having won last year. Uh, and our first win with Giles in the car as well, which has been great. And Giles, it's a bit different for you here at a racetrack. Yeah, yeah, normally I see you on the gravel, but um, yeah, the first time I've been to Rockingham, really enjoyed it today, two-day event, um, brings its own challenges. Yeah, we've had a bit of luck on our side, we managed it today, uh, a good victory, I think, yeah. James Stewart, what a fight you've had this weekend, two days of rallying and here you are second place, and you couldn't really have asked for much more than that this weekend. No, it's been great, um, you know, obviously Dave was long gone up the roads and actually before him, shame he went out of the way he did, but we had a great scrap with Paul King. Um, Jackson and Dave West and to lead an issue, so yeah, cracking event. James, the rain did come, but I'm not sure you could have done much more anyway, regardless. No, not really. Uh, it's been sort of nip and tuck all afternoon with those boys. Uh, yeah. Really good, actually. Yeah, really enjoyed this one. Um, it's been a while since we've had so, so I mean, so few competitors with, with like very equal cars. Yeah. Um, and then just the conditions really throwing it, throwing sort of into the mix. It was and good for the championship as well, not just for you guys, because we've got that fight going on and it, you know moving through. We've got Christmas now, and then we hit it back at Croft. Yeah, it's, uh, it does set it up for Croft pretty well. Yeah, it's, um, I thought it'd be more of a sort of walkover with certain cars, but it's certainly not. It's, uh, it's got to be interesting all the way down, I think. Well done, boys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Peter, Craig, what a result. The car looks a little bit second-hand, though. You've taken a corner off during every stage, I think. Well, we had to try. We knew we'd come down here um, as not the underdog, but we came down not knowing the circuit. So we thought if we were going to come away with a good result, we needed to push hard at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. Luckily, we learned the circuit, and, yeah, we've had a, good, a, really, a really good result. Fantastic result. Craig, is it all about the championship? Is he looking at championship now? Yeah, we're pretty, pretty good, really. Like I say, we come down here not knowing the place. And then we had the local boys shaking their heads, wondering what was going on, but he's drove perfectly all week and he's listened. Come out with maybe second championship points, so that hardly was. And yeah, Happy we days. are doing the championship. Yeah. We are doing the championship. We had two bad rounds, well, obviously a bad round at Oaken Park. Mm. The engine had to come out, the shells had to be done. Um, so this basically is the first, uh, it's the third round, isn't it? But, yeah, yeah. but it's our first proper go at it attack. Well, it's a good start in that case. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, round three has been a lesson, if nothing else, on how to create mileage out of a single venue. Because I tell you what, the Rockingham guys have done a fantastic job here at round three of the Motorsport News Circuit Rally Championship. It has been a great battle. We've had all kinds of weather here. We've had people switching position at the top of the leaderboard right through the field. We've, of course, had drama and intrigue to add to that, which is becoming a theme for this championship. For now, though, that's it from round three. We'll see you at Croft for round four. Meanwhile, have a great Christmas. Party, bye, bye.
plus 10 and the sixth race continues to McLean.